Hi, everyone. Welcome to this informational session on fostering ringworm kittens for the ASPCA Kit Nursery. My name's Gemma Smith, and I'm the Administrative Manager here at the nursery. Thank you so much for joining me today. So first, let's review today's agenda. What is the Kit Nursery? I'll share with you the background of our nursery. Then I'll explain what ringworm is and why it's so important and valuable to foster ringworm kittens. I'll also review with you what you can expect when you foster ringworm kittens for the nursery. And lastly, I'll be sure to provide you next steps on how to sign up to become an ASPCA foster caregiver and how you can get started fostering. All right, so what is the ASPCA Kitten Nursery? Located on the Upper East Side in New York City, the Kitten Nursery is a seasonal facility. We're open during the feline breeding season or what you may have heard um, called kitten season. And kitten season usually lasts here in New York in the warmer months from April through November. And at the Kitten Nursery, we care for mother cats and their litters as well as orphaned kittens up to eight weeks of age. Our main source of intakes comes from the New York City Shelter System, Animal Care Centers, ACC. Our goal is to support ACC as much as possible and to help as many kittens as possible. And we do take in kittens from the public as well on a case-by-case -case basis and by appointment only. The kittens that we care for are among the most vulnerable homeless animal populations in the country. So it's imperative for us to do all that we can to save and protect them. And last year alone, the kitten nursery took in 711 cats and kittens. And this summer of 2022, we will have helped 10,000 kittens since opening our doors. And the most vulnerable of these kittens, like the one pictured here, need foster caregivers to help them grow healthy and strong. Especially our special needs kittens, such as this little bottle baby in the photo that needs to be bottle fed around the clock. And you guessed it, ringworm kittens. And we keep our kittens in foster until they're big enough to get spayed and neutered, uh, medically healthy, and are confident enough to take on the world. And often kittens come to us and we find foster placement for them by the end of the day. It's a quick turnaround. And because we won't have these kittens in the nursery for long before they go to foster, we won't have the ability to get to know them and learn their little habits and quirks. So you as a foster will really get to know them best. Before we dive into today's presentation, I wanted to share the story of a special kitten named Vanna. Vanna came to the kitten nursery from Animal Care Centers of New York City and was diagnosed with ringworm, which you'll learn a lot about in a few moments. <laughs> Instead of Vanna staying in a kennel in the shelter while waiting to be cleared of ringworm, a foster caregiver named Marsha took Vanna home. With a lot of special attention, socialization, and care, Vanna was cleared of ringworm and grew healthy, happy, and strong in her foster home. And as a bonus, Marsha fell so much in love that she adopted Vanna and is what we call a foster fortune. And Vanna is now living her best life as an adopted house cat in a safe and loving home. Now that we've heard Vanna's story, I'm sure you want to know, well, what is ringworm exactly? Well, ringworm is not as scary as it sounds. Ringworm is a superficial fungal infection of the skin, hair, and nails. It is not a serious medical concern, but it can be rather intensive to treat. And because ringworm is a fungal infection, it's not actually caused by a worm of any kind. The infection is called ringworm because it can cause a red circular rash to appear. And it's important to note that ringworm is zoonotic, meaning it can be spread from cats to other animals and to humans. So what does ringworm look like? The classic ringworm lesion is an area of hair loss with crusting and inflammation of the skin. 
You might also see a broken hair or broken whiskers. And the most common area of lesions are the face, ears, feet, and tail. These lesions may or may not be itchy, and oftentimes kittens don't even know they have ringworm and behave just like normal kittens. And as you can see in this photo, we have a very cute kitten who is the poster child for classic ringworm lesions. How is ringworm spread? Ringworm is most commonly spread from direct contact with an infected animal, so skin-to-skin -skin contact. Also, infected hairs and spores can be shed in the environment, although infection from the environment alone is less common. And without proper disinfection, ringworm can remain in an environment for a long time. How do we screen for ringworm at the kitten nursery? Upon intake, all of our kittens are examined under a woods lamp. The woods lamp is a special kind of ultraviolet light that makes any ringworm positive hair follicles glow under the light. As you can see in this photo, this kitten's ringworm lesions are glowing under the woods lamp. And if glowing occurs, we will start a dermatophyte test medium, also known as a DTM confirmatory test as the woods lamp is not always accurate. And this DTM test takes 14 days for the results to come back. During this wait time, we treat the kittens as if they were positive since it can take weeks to months to treat. All right, so now you know a little bit about what ringworm is, this fungal infection, and how it can be spread. So why is it so important to foster kittens with ringworm? Take a look at the slide. It features kittens who have all previously been treated for ringworm at the kitten nursery. And all of these kittens went to a loving foster home to recover from their fungal infection in a low stress environment. And as you can see, these super cute faces are a big reason why one might want to foster ringworm kittens, but there's more to the story. Fostering ringworm kittens makes a huge direct positive impact on their lives. If kept in the shelter, these kittens would be isolated to their kennel. They would have limited socialization and limited space to run around and explore. In a foster's home, they not only get more space, but they also get plenty of TLC and socialization to help them prepare to be a future adopted house cat. And again, while they're in foster, kittens can recover from ringworm in a low stress environment versus being in a shelter where there are lots of other kittens around and noise nearby. Oh, and I meant to say that is little lamb chop. So the kittens on these slides are all kittens who were treated for ringworm while in foster under the care of the kitten nursery. Um, I love lamb chops nose marking. All right. So in addition, having kittens in a foster home will help decrease the risk of ringworm spreading in an animal shelter. And having ringworm kittens in foster also frees up more space at our nursery so that we can take in and care for more kittens with special needs. And as a bonus, our ringworm fosters have shared that it is such a fun and rewarding experience for them to have these special kittens in their home. Look at Houston and Hobart here, pictured in blankets while drying from one of their special baths. And lastly, prepare to fall in love with your kittens. We will inform you if your foster kittens already have an adopter. And if they don't have an adopter and you or a loved one would like to adopt your foster animal, let us know. We can place an adoption hold. However, we also value fostering in itself. And whether you adopt your foster animal or not, it makes a huge positive impact. All right. So... This is all sounding good to you and you want to know, well, what can I expect? What is a typical foster experience like? In this section, I'll review with you what you can expect when fostering a typical litter of kittens with ringworm. So what do fosters provide and what does the ASPCA provide? 
From the day you bring your foster kittens home, we'll provide you all the necessary supplies so that you can provide the safety, care, and socialization they need while they're with you. For example, you need a playpen? We've got you covered. When your foster kittens need to be seen by a veterinarian for any new or ongoing medical concern, our medical team will provide all the veterinary care at our ASPCA facilities. As you and your foster kittens settle into a routine at home together, you can help us understand who they are and what they need. The information you share with us about how they're doing will directly inform how we guide you to teach them new things, which will help prepare them for a home and help us promote them for adoption more effectively too. We rely on you as a foster caregiver to give ringworm kittens their medication, bring your foster animal to and from their appointments on the Upper East Side in Manhattan, drop off their weekly fur samples, and to come pick up more supplies as needed. And most importantly, communication is key. We are invested in you and your foster animal, and our team is here for you. Keep us in touch and keep us informed so we can support your success. And here is an example of two nursery littermates with ringworm last season who went to foster. As you can see, Upton and Usain are six week old kittens pictured here. And we'll review the snapshot, snapshot of what type of care these kittens require. The foster home recommendations include no other animals in the home, must have a dedicated space to house kittens separately, and the ability to come to the kitten nursery weekly to drop off a fur sample. And these kittens are eating wet and dry food on their own three times a day. As typical for ringworm kittens, they are on both an oral antifungal medication and a twice weekly medicated bath. Now I noted that these two kittens eat three times a day. Uh, however, we do have some younger kittens who may need some help eating. They are called our transitional feeders and we would provide you guidelines. They may need to eat four times a day. There may be some kittens weaning off the bottle and we'll provide you guidance uh, in those circumstances. Preparing your home. It's important to prepare your home to foster kittens diagnosed with ringworm. Kittens need to be kept in their own fully enclosed, easy to clean space without a lot of soft furnishings. You know, a bathroom in New York City here is ideal or a playpen placed in an isolated, easy to clean area. It's important to note kittens should remain completely separate from any resident pets until they are finished treatment and are cleared by the vet to interact. Fosters should also use dedicated cleaning and feeding supplies wash bedding, and throw away disposable items after use. This will prevent the spread of ringworm within the environment as kittens could potentially reinfect themselves. And here's a lovely bathroom setup in this photo. And these photos also show examples of real life ringworm foster setups. Because if you aren't able to keep the kittens in your bathroom, you can also create your own separate space for them in your apartment. We can provide a plastic playpen like the one pictured on the right that is easy to clean and keeps the kitten confined, yet they still have some room to run and play. And the photo on the left shows a homemade foster pen that was disposed of after treatment. Please note items like soft bedding must be washed and items like cat trees should not be used while the kittens have ringworm as they have to be discarded after use. Again, the idea here is that the area is easy to clean and keeps the kittens confined and separate from household members and resident pets. How should fosters expect to care for these special kittens? Well, you are still able to play and interact with the kittens. However, foster caregivers should wear gloves. If you are unable to purchase your own, we can provide them and wash your hands thoroughly after interacting with the kittens. Caregivers should also either change clothes or wear separate clothes or coverings, such as like a gown or a poncho when interacting with the kittens, as ringworm can be passed to people and other animals. And here is a photo of one of our volunteers 
holding a kitten while wearing personal protective equipment so that she does not transmit ringworm. Next, kittens will require medicated baths twice a week and fosters will bathe them with a special shampoo that we provide. We'll also provide you with an instructional video showing you how to bathe your foster kitten. And we'll provide that shampoo as well as a snuggle safe heating disc to keep the kittens nice and warm after their bath. You can see a photo of the pink snuggle safe heating disc in the microwave and the heated disc wrapped in wee wee pads for post bath drying space. In addition to the twice weekly baths, foster caregivers will also administer oral medication. Fosters will be required to give two different types of medication. And luckily, you know, medicating kittens is a lot easier than you might think. The first medication that you'll give is called gabapentin. This is a medication given to kittens to alleviate stre the stress from bathing, and it's given two hours prior to their bath. We'll also provide you with an antifungal medication, which is also an oral medication. And all medication is dispensed in preloaded oral syringes and all medication should be given as prescribed. We also have a instructional video uh, for fosters on administering medication if you need further guidance. And in addition to giving medication, foster caregivers must brush their kittens with toothbrushes we provide and bring a toothbrush into the nursery for testing weekly. We'll provide you with a sample collection instructional video as well prior to fostering. And fosters are required to bring a toothbrush sample in a plastic bag to the nursery every week. And here's our wonderful foster team. Our foster coordinators are here to help and support you. We will reach out weekly to check in on your kitten's health and behavior and we are available every day between 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. If you need urgent support outside those hours, we'll provide you with an after hours hotline that you can call. And our team will provide you with resources such as a kitten 101 training covering everything you need to know about kitten fostering. We'll also provide foster medical discharge information along with an electronic foster informational packet. And you'll have access to a New York City foster Facebook group where you can share and connect with other fosters. After the foster periods ends, we will provide you with an antifungal cleaner to disinfect your home. We will also give you a toothbrush to swab the area and we'll run the same DTM test to ensure your home is ringworm free. And your home must be confirmed to be ringworm free before taking home another foster animal. All right. So are you ready to foster? If our program sounds like an appropriate fit for you and you are ready to join the ASPCA foster program, here are the next steps. If you want to foster ringworm kittens or have any questions about the process, please email us at nursery.foster at ASPCA.org to get started. If you've watched this and you think, you know, ringworm kittens aren't the fit for me, but I still want to foster. Well, we'd love to have you. You can join our program by going to ASPCA.org slash foster and choose the New York City location. You'll be asked to watch an orientation, take a quiz, and submit an application. Again, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to us at nursery.foster at ASPCA.org, and we're so happy to help you. Thank you for tuning in to this informational session, and we appreciate your interest in fostering for the ASPCA.